Well, hi there, everybody. Uh, it's great to be back, and I am going to start off this, this little kickoff back to YouTube with a couple of these red autumn leaves. I thought it would be fun to paint this together. And I am mixing up some of this alizarin crimson that I am discovering. I really don't like the color at all. Um, it's kind of an odd color. Uh, I think, believe it's a Sennelier tube that I've had for a long time that I popped into this palette and I wasn't super excited. So I am mixing that with a little bit of the uh, um, cad red that I have and I'm mixing up another puddle with some cad orange and some burnt sienna. I just want to get these puddles going because we're going to be starting these leaves off with a little bit of wet and wet. Now I was inspired to do this tutorial because I just finished watching uh, a Louise de Massey tutorial and I love her and if you haven't checked her out be sure to check her out. Uh, she painted a pin oak leaf and um, I really like her teaching style and her tutorials and I thought that it would be really fun to um, kind of go over some of the things that she did and show you my kind of interpretation or what I took away from her tutorial. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going in with the first layer of water and I've been painting for a long time. I've painted in all sorts of different mediums and probably I think watercolor for probably the last six years or so. And there's always something new to discover, something new to learn. And probably one of the best things that I learned in that tutorial that I watched from Louise was that when she wets an area that has no paint on it, you're starting off with your first wash, um, don't take that water all the way out to the edge. The reason that she doesn't do that is that it creates your paint to pool along the edge and when it dries you get these hard very pigmented outlines and I thought it was brilliant so I am now incorporating that into my own painting style. So these are the little takeaway things uh, when we watch classes and tutorials from other instructors that we can incorporate into our own painting practice. And I'm, that's why tutorials and classes exist. When you paint from a tutorial or a class, it's always best after you finish your tutorial to try something on your own. Try a different subject, like what I'm doing here with these two red leaves. Go out and um, take your own reference photos and really, really make these your own. So these two red leaves are actually from my backyard and it was a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. So I took a couple of reference photos where I had a really strong cast shadow on um, a piece of white paper. And I really love that that intense shadow against the uh, highly pigmented red. And we're gonna get there with the, with the red pigment, just not quite yet. You'll always start out with your lightest colors in watercolor and you work your way up. And what I'm doing here is just kind of making a map for myself. Uh, I know that the tip of this leaf at the very top is gonna be dark. Um, I'm just laying in some initial color and I'll add in some, some darker areas as well. And we'll be painting over this, so I'm not completely, you know, married to what's going on on the paper right now. It's just a, a light wash and it will dry a lot lighter than this. But this is the color that we'll be poking through our veining on the leaves. So you want to think about that when, you, when you're looking at your reference photo. Try
try to find those super light areas and that will be the color that you'll lay down in your first wash. So I am wetting this entire top section here and I'm avoiding that flipped over part of the leaf because my intention here is to paint a darker shadow. Now in the reference photo you can see that there's um, a shadow created by this flipped over part of the leaf and the edges are soft and there's also a cast shadow that's created which has harder edges so I'm going to add in this darker color underneath which is the brown that I've got mixed up from the red and green and I'm doing this while the paper is wet so that I can have those soft blended out edges and I can also cover up a little bit of this bloom that I um, created And I rinsed out my brush and dried it off a little bit and um, just kind of swiped it along the edge there to make sure that the paint was um, going to dry a soft edge. And I'm mixing up a little bit of this darker color and adding some of that green into it. And there's an area of the leaf that is dried out and you can still see a little bit of the green in that dried out area and I'm just adding some extra paint down here um, to darken this area up a little bit. And I'm making sure I don't have too much water in my brush only because I've got that wet edge next to it. I don't want to create any more um, like big blooms or anything. And like I said before, you know, a leaf is a, the perfect time if you want to uh, experiment with texture. Um, it's, it's certainly not going to hurt if you have a bloom. It just adds some interest. And nobody's, like I said, nobody's going to hold up your painting next to the reference photo. So. So I'm taking some of this paint that I've got and I am going over the top of this folded over part because I feel like it's a little bit too light and a little bit too flat. It doesn't have a lot of texture in it and I think it creates a lot of contrast um, with it being so light up against this super dark part of the leaf and I want to push that back a little bit because I don't want the eye to go directly to that folded over part of the leaf. And I grabbed a little bit of that brown and I'm just kind of softening out some of these edges too so they're not quite so hard. And I've got an opportunity to add in a little bit of darker paint. So some of these areas are still damp. And I'm trying to add in that cast shadow.
So I'm going to grab some of this red and add that into uh, the top of this uh, stem here on this leaf. And it was reading just a little bit too light. And I'm going in with some wet paint right on the dry paper and I am just accentuating some of these little areas here that are a little bit darker. So I am making sure too that as I'm adding in this darker color that these areas aren't going to dry with a hard edge so I'll rinse out my brush and wipe it off and just swipe over it along the edge to make sure that it's not going to dry a hard edge. And I'm picking up a really watered down mix of some red and I'm glazing over some areas of these veins. They're just reading way too light, and this will help kind of push them back a little bit. And they'll still read as veins. It'll still read lighter. We just don't want them super pronounced. So on this section, I'm gonna start adding in some of these shadow areas now that this is completely dry. And you can see the cast shadow. Um, and as I was painting this and looking at the reference photo, I had a really difficult time telling that that tip of the leaf was actually flipped over and that's what was creating the cast shadow. I could not figure out where the cast shadow was coming from. Um, I knew that there was a tipped over part of the leaf and that maybe, I don't know, I wasn't seeing it or something, but I resolved that towards the, um, towards the end when everything is dry. Now I'm painting directly on dry paper. I haven't um, I haven't wet any of the sections of the paper and the reason is that I don't want these edges to bleed out. Cast shadows have hard edges. So I'm painting just directly on the dry paper and letting it dry like that. And I'm just popping in some of these little darker areas that I see that aren't necessarily shadows. Um, they could be little textures or dried areas of the leaf or just a, a different uh, pigment. And I'm going to add in another little um, shadow down here. And it is a cast shadow, but it's got, since it's a bend in the leaf, uh, it is a little bit softer edge. So I'll take my brush and kind of fuzz out the edges. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that red and get it really watered down. And I'm gonna glaze over uh, the veins in this leaf as well, just to get those um, pushed back. And what's nice about doing it like this uh, is it's like I said, it still will read as a vein, but it, it really incorporates it into the leaf when you glaze over it with a really diluted mix of paint. So I usually save glazing um, kind of towards the end. Um, it's always helpful to warm up a piece or um, add some color where you feel you needed it. So I've gone in now with um, a darker red and I'm just adding it along the edge of these lighter areas of the vein so that it creates a little bit of dimension. And I think these little subtle details that you add in make, um, make a really big difference too in the overall look of the painting. We'll be adding in 
um, some quick details too. We'll add in some red uh, veins that, um, that are running through the leaf as well towards the end. So this area is dry enough for me to paint this cast shadow in that that flipped over part of the leaf is creating. And I have to tip my paper. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see with the overhead light that I have. And I'm just trying to get the shape correct. And I'm lifting out some of this color here that I previously painted. And I had to go back in and drop in a little bit more paint because I didn't like what I did. And then I had to kind of step away from it because I knew I was gonna start fussing. So I switched over to working on the bigger leaf and I'm gonna add in that darker pigment right along the edge of some of these veins. And you can see I'm taking that darker red and I'm also adding in some very thin lines here and there. Just to add a little more interest. Um, and I'm also darkening up that, that dried part of the leaf on the smaller leaf and I'm going back in and fuzzing out some of these um, some of these veins so they don't stand out too much. We don't want them to be the focus. We want them to you know be an addition. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and now that it's dry I can go back in here and I'm gonna glaze over both of these leaves with a really watered down mixture of opera pink and this cad red and that was one of the things that I really loved about these leaves is that they were so vibrant and that's really what I wanted to capture and we're gonna make all of this pop when we add the uh, shadow color into it so I am glazing right on top of everything and like I said the nice thing about glazing is it really helps to kind of pull everything together and, and unify uh, the whole area. And I painted right over that flipped over part of the leaf. And this is a really watered down mixture. It's not highly pigmented, it's enough though. So our veins have become very subtle, but you can still see them. You know that they're there. And that's gonna have to dry. I hit that with the dryer before mixing up a puddle of um, some ultramarine blue and a little bit of, I do add a little bit of um, opera pink into this mix as well because uh, there's a little bit of a color shift. And you'll see that uh, more towards the right side of the, the shadow where I add in <clears throat> some of that uh, opera pink and also some of the red that I have on the palette there. You can see the, the color shift. So I'm very carefully adding in this cast shadow, being mindful of these really uh, detailed kind of sharp edges. and filling everything in as quickly as I can and adding in a little bit of extra uh, dark texture into that big leaf. And I'm gonna call this finished. Um, when the piece is dry, which it is right here, it's dried 
a lot lighter, but I wanna show you where I went in and I lifted out some of the color here at the top with this little scrubby brush. I made it damp and lifted out the color and that's how I was able, I did the same thing here too to lighten that back up and that's pretty much it. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.